magic of art with your host, Rob Moss. I am your host, Rob Moss. Join me today as we go on a magical journey and make some wonderful art together. Won't you come along? For those of you who are of the more artistically inclined, please join along. You can follow at home. All you need are these few simple supplies. Come on, let's make some art together. A wooden lattice board, a book of dendrology, some color appropriate pom poms, a fabric marker, your favorite hobby glue, some wood to make a fence, some wood to make a barn, some wheat. This will represent grass because wheat looks like dried grass. A good pair of craft scissors. And of course, a smile and a little bit of magic. To begin, we will want to start with the fabric marker. I choose a fabric marker because it will write easily on our wood surface. The first step for us today is to lay out our scene. Now, if you can't tell, we are doing a country scene today. Since it is fall time, I prefer a happy fall countryside. And I like barns, so we're going to use a barn in this. Now, we want to start in the foreground first and work our way into the back. So I'm going to lay out the landscape here by by inserting a little fence row, we're gonna start in this corner and we're gonna put our fence row across the landscape like this. It's going to go all the way across there. Now, of course, in any fence row, there are posts, so we need to get some posts in here. I'm gonna put a post there and I'm gonna put another post here. Now, you want to be uh, aware of the diminishing perspective of the post, so the post should get smaller as they move further away. And I like the variation in the landscape since uh, there's rolling hills here, so we want to be sure to in indicate the, the rolling hills. And so we'll put our posts in here. Again, they get a little smaller as they move away. And we'll put one more little post over there, like so. Now we're also going to do some fence in the background to really make this look like a, a working piece of land. And, and I'm going to include some trees over here. So um, the trees will be next. Let's include these over here. We'll have one that kind of uh, is, is jaggedy and it will stick out and have some, some branches and uh, maybe a big branch that comes out over here and, and one that sprouts up like that. Let's put a couple uh, peekers in here. Uh, they're just peeking in and, and saying hello and, and maybe one more over here, but the majority of the tree will be outside of our view. We'll just see the little bits coming in. Now let's finish off with, with uh, some more fences. We'll have some fences in here. Um, we'll have a, a little post there and uh, maybe, maybe a little post there and we'll put one in there as well. We're kind of creating this land uh, in beneath. And let's go ahead and do a, a little gate, maybe a, maybe a double gate here with, a, with some verticals and some horizontals like that. And, uh, and here's the other half of that double gate. It's about the same dimensions all the way across. And like so, yes. This is looking marvelous. Okay, now let's put the post on the end of that gate and uh, maybe it has a little little support bar and then, and then another post in here. And we'll make this a little bit larger for some scale and this one as well. And then we'll finish up. It's gonna meet up with this fence over here. So we'll, we'll have a post 
and a post. Those two are kind of close together. Uh, that's on purpose. And we'll do that one and maybe a, another little hint of a gate over there. Yes, I'm liking that. Okay, and then in the background here, let's do some more um, fences because again, this is gonna have all of the signs of a working farm and so we wanna keep the landscape busy. Now we're gonna have some grass growing in up here and of course we'll dot it in uh, all around the landscape and, um, and we'll bring all of this together. Okay, so we'll have another fence back here. Real subtle, not a gate, if you will some gating in there. And then we want to continue this fence along, along the landscape. We'll just go all the way off over to the edge. And uh, some posts. We'll put some posts along the way. Yeah, some pretty little posts. Great. And over here, of course, uh, it, these are just going to peek through behind uh, the trees. So we'll, we'll just kind of make this disappear into the into the distance here very subtle okay one last thing and then we actually i think we'll just jump into it next i want to set our barn in place the barn is the central focal point and we're gonna we're gonna set one right here a nice big old barn and I want to start again closer so I'm going to start with the closest corner of the barn this is going to be a perspective it's not a flat on barn so we want to start with that closest corner and that closest corner is going to land us right about oh let's make it right here that looks good yeah right there okay and then and then we're going to draw this out to the edge and there's a corner in the distance now this is gonna be a flat surface, so we need to draw this, this flat surface along here. There's a rooftop. And uh, let's bring that roof edge over to here, and like so, yeah. And, uh, and let's, let's add another little vertical space here, and, and then another roof line, and another vertical space, yeah, I like that. That looks nice. Now let's come in here, let's, let's put the peak on this barn, uh, right about here, that looks good. And another one here, also good. And, uh, and then we'll finish it out, maybe about like that. You know, I, I like those little coplas that they put on the tops of barns to, to, vent, uh, to vent the space, so let's, let's add one of those in. We'll put one of those right, right about here. I like that. Yeah, that looks fantastic. And then uh, we'll finish it off right there. That looks good, yeah. And then we'll bring this roof on down and have a little, a little shadow in there. Perhaps the outside of the barn over here. And, uh, and of course, this is a perspective, so we're gonna, we're gonna finish off over here like that. What a, what a pretty little barn we've just made. Maybe there's a little crack in the door right there. Just, just a peek. But there's something inside. Maybe we want to add a couple little windows here. Just by taking the, the flat edge of the marker and, and adding a couple of little windows. That looks lovely. Now we'll go back and add the texture later. That's what our special book is for. I'll show you that in a moment. But I'm not quite finished here. I think that, yes, I think that there's another building that needs to be present. Maybe a, a little brother barn. Let's, let's add a little brother barn in here. Let's uh, maybe right next. They're close. It's like they're it's like they're huddled together. Maybe right over here. And this this isn't as majestic of a barn, but but it's a companion barn, a little brother barn that disappears into the back and uh, has this kind of aged, sloping little roof. Alright, 
and there will be some textures and, uh, and some, some metal in the roof. I think that is appropriate for the brother barn. And of course, we'll have a fence that will continue on and disappear in behind the trees here, but it's important that we get it in first. All right, now we've got the foreground set. Perhaps we've got a, a couple of other little fence things going, going on back here. Uh, we need a tree, another tree, maybe one right there. Yes, I'm, I like the idea of, of putting a tree in. Maybe this is a more grand tree and it will have uh, a lot of ideas flowering and sprouting off of it. And since this is a larger tree, we're gonna, we're gonna give him a lot of life. He's gonna extend up here and, and sort of foreshadow our back landscape. And so I think that's a good starting point. Now, laying out the basis is, is important, the sketch of what our image will be. So out here, let's fill in the background of the landscape. There's gonna be the end of a prairie. Let's do it right about here. And, um, and then we'll have another hilltop oh, about up there. Maybe, maybe some, some trees uh, out here together. Maybe three little talkative trees up there and maybe one by himself. A little bush there and maybe another one. Just a, a pretty little, little perfect group of uh, hedgerows, yes. Maybe some more in the, uh, in the f background to this tree. In fact, you know, I think, I think there should be something uh, else in the background here, something really busy uh, along the edge of this prairie in the back. We'll make it look really busy back there. Perhaps one more. a little bit of busyness up there. And uh, now there's another tree. Let's, let's do another tree in here in that background that's getting covered up by this foreground here. Maybe another branch in the foreground. Yes, I think we have the beginning of a very happy scene. Now, of course, once you have all of that set in place, you're ready to begin filling in uh, some details and making magic happen. For this next element, um, we need to add some recipe into the soup to make the magic really occur. And that liquid in the soup is our Elmer's glue, our craft glue. So I'm gonna start by opening this up. And, um, and then I also wanna take our, our uh, wood for our fence and, and we want to start sizing this up because we're going to need to make our fence in the foreground and I'm gonna just break these little pieces off here and about to size this is our foreground fence and so we want to keep it just like what we see in our picture and this is gonna give us a really rugged look and then I'm gonna take these elements here and I'm gonna uh, just just put some glue on them and, and just enough to get them into place and, uh, and then I'm gonna insert them like so. Yes, that's, that's marvelous. You don't want too much glue. If you have too much glue, it'll, it'll push out. You want just enough, just enough to make happy little posts. Now you have your posts. Now it will take those posts a while to set, but in the meantime, we're gonna get busy and we're gonna fill some color into this landscape back here. And so to do that, we want our pom-poms. Now I took two types, two colors of pom-poms. We're gonna have two primary colors inside of our picture. It's gonna be greens and browns, lots of greens, lots of browns. And you don't want um, to overdo this, but, but you can't, 
almost put too many in. So we're gonna start by laying some pom-poms in here behind the fence line. And they just need a little dab of glue and, uh, and then they'll be ready to set right in. So let's, let's set in some of these pom-poms onto our landscape. We can scatter these pom-poms around, but I'm liking a little green patch over here, so we're gonna do a little bit with that. Yes, happy little green patch right there. Sometimes adding pom-poms can be a little messy at times, but don't be afraid to get your hands dirty if it's necessary. Okay, after you have your pom-poms set, and glued into place. And, and again, some of them may not want to be very uh, agreeable, but you just have to be a little bit forceful with them sometimes. And just make them go where you want them to go. But get the pom-poms in place and then move on to the next color. Now the next color, these pom-poms we're gonna use up here on this hillside. It's gonna be a little bit brighter uh, hillside, maybe where there's uh, a lot of uh, dead wheat from uh, after the harvest. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill those in next and, uh, and then I'll come back and I'll show you what we do after that. It's getting so dark. I think it's time for a little bit of light on the subject. Ooh. Now that we have the pom-poms done, once they stop falling off, it's time to add a little bit of grass into the hillside here uh, in front of the fence. And that is what the wheat is for. And I'm gonna show you how we separate the wheat out and begin to glue it into our scene as well. So, okay, here we go. We have our wheat here and you can see it's nice and fluffy. It's like grass, only it's finer than grass. And this is why it's good for our landscape here because we'll be able to lay it in and it'll look uh, proportionate, you know, the little blades of grass. And that's what we want to create. So I'm going to start by clipping little bits of this off and then uh, we'll create clumps and glue it in and, uh, and we'll get little, little bits. And again, you want to kind of be perspective about this because the blades should be bigger uh, the closer that you are and smaller as you move away down the landscape. So that's next. So let's, let's do that now. All right, so I'm gonna start by taking some of these longer ones and uh, we're just gonna snip them off in little, little groups here like that. And, and then I'm gonna take my glue and I'm gonna lay it in on the backside here really well, just, just gluing. I need to open the glue up. It's good to close your glue when you're not using it. That protects the glue and keeps it moist. Okay, some people have an aversion to the word moist. Did you know that? I hope you aren't one because I use the word moist. So I'm gonna add our glue in and I'm gonna be a little bit liberal with the glue because we're gonna need to have plenty of stick and we're gonna make it begin by, by sticking right there. Oh, it's really, really a mess. But there, there's some little bit of grass right there. Now let's get some more grass. Maybe not quite as long this time. We'll grab the next clump. And uh, I've got some uh, glue on my thumb already. And uh, you can start by using that to get the, the grass strands to stick together. And We'll add some more in here, like so. Yeah, that looks very pretty. Okay, we've got some pretty grass now. We wanna keep adding more and more pretty grass, so I'm gonna get some more. And you wanna set it in low. We wanna weave it up in. So let's, let's add some, and don't be afraid if this separates out a little bit. Um, we just wanna kinda work this all in like that, and uh, it'll want to stick to your fingers, but that's okay. Yeah, you're becoming a part of, uh, of the art, and uh, all good artists do that. They become a part of the art, 
And uh, so don't be afraid if you find yourself becoming a part of the art. It'll make it mean that much more to you once it's all said and done. Uh, Part of any good magic is becoming, uh, art magic is becoming a part of the art. Yes, very good. Look, I'm becoming a part of the art. Okay, Um, let's add some more grass over here. And uh, and I'm just gonna speed things along a little bit by smothering in some glue here and some glue here. And we're just gonna press this in really good, kind of spread it out. And yes, this is wonderful. Yeah. Now sometimes our pom poms, they might still be a little angry with us, but we have to keep them in check. Let's add some more in here. That's good. And don't be afraid if if uh, your grass gets a little uh, unkept because this is a, a, a working farm, or at least it was a long time ago. And, um, and now that it's fall, that's when the farmers stop keeping the land. They let it lie. And so we, we're okay if it had to let lie a little bit and get a little overgrown along the fence rows. Okay, just like that. That looks good. We'll get a little bit more grass over here. Oh, the pom-poms. Oh, those angry pom-poms. Okay, let's get some in here. And uh, sometimes the grass, if you do it right, it'll help keep your pom-poms in check. So we'll put some more over here. And, uh, and yes. Okay, this is starting to take shape. Can you see it? Are you starting to get the vision for it? As we make this a a happy landscape place, it's looking very lovely. Uh, It's already becoming uh, a magical place I'd like to be whisked away to. And uh, so I'm very, very pleased with the direction that our happy landscape is taking. Okay, now that we have our grass in place, we can set that over to the side. And now what we want to do is we want to create some texture in on the barn. And so that's our next step. And that's what our book of dendrology is all about. So here we have our book of dendrology and it has all of these wonderful um, photographs, uh, textures of wood and um, and wood surfaces. And we're going to use this and uh, and create some texture uh, inside of our barn. I particularly like this right here. Um, This will look wonderful for the roof. So we're gonna use some of that uh, for our roof. And I'm just gonna cut out a section here. First of all, I'm gonna open us up. Yeah, just open, open this book up. And this is a good page for us to use, so I'm gonna take it out and, um, and we'll use some of this for our, our roof right here. I think that's gonna look great for, for this roof, for this barn. So I'm gonna start by taking a little bit here. And we're, gonna, we're just gonna cut enough for what we need right about there and we'll cut that out. Just a nice little square piece and, um, and yeah, I can trim that down a little bit. I think that would be good to trim. Actually, I, I, wanna, I want the grain to go the other way. So we're gonna, we're gonna change this grain up to, to go in the other direction. And uh, we want it to go about like, about like that, yeah. Yeah, just a, a little bit there. See that? Yeah, and I trimmed it the wrong way, so we'll, we'll trim it. We'll trim it that way. That's, that looks good. So we'll take a little bit of that and, um, and we'll, we'll put that right in here. Yeah, just like, like that. That looks nice. Now I need to get another bit for, for that part of the roof. Okay, I got the rest of our roof. Now we have to cut it down to size. Yeah, that looks about right. Okay, and now we're gonna just glue that 
right in there. That's right, look at that. That's looking wonderful. That's looking just great. Now I'm gonna go ahead and, and finish out the rest of our wood surfaces and I'll be right back so that you can take a look and see what the finished product looks like. Stay tight. Well, here you have it. Another fine masterpiece. Together, you and I have clearly made some beautiful art. There's only one thing left to do and that's to put our name on this beautiful composition. I'm gonna do that right here. Moss, yes. Well, thank you for joining me once again for another fantastic adventure in the magic of art. Oh, I almost forgot. We almost forgot. How could I? I got so wrapped up, I forgot about the magic part of the magic of art. All right, here we go. Let's go into a wonderful world of magical art. Everybody say it with me. Art, magic, art, magic, art, magic. Wow, look at this. It's so fantastic. Oh, the magic part always brings the whole thing together, doesn't it? Well, thank you again so much. And please join me the next time for the art magic, the magic of art. I'm Bob Moss, your artistic host. Have a wonderful day.